Here we have, in the sinner, God's primary attribute is holy. That's his primary attribute. Now, what do we typically say? What's his primary attribute? Love is what we say. Now, God is love in 1 John. God does love. He loved us so much, he sent his only begotten son. God loves, there's no doubt about it. But here's what makes his love even better, is it stems from his holiness. So he's holy and he loves from that holiness. That makes it even better. That means there's no insecurity in him. That means there's no manipulation in him. When we get to the word jealous in a second, it doesn't mean jealous like what we think about. He's holy. And from that comes his love. Think about what you have in your lap right now. You have the Holy Bible. You, uh, if you're a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. The angels in Revelation and in, in, in Isaiah, and just those two places even, it says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You never see in your Bible that God is love, love, love. You don't have the love Bible in your lap. You have the Holy Bible in your lap. You didn't receive the love spirit. You received the Holy Spirit. So from his holiness, watch, comes his grace, that makes grace even better. From his holiness comes his justice, that makes it pure. From his holiness comes his majesty, that makes him great, and heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. From his holiness comes his intimacy, that we can spend time with the one who knows every hair on our head. Do you see how even, this makes it better, this makes it greater. Now let's look at the names that we could have that are there in gray, If if we're in the quadrant where we see him as graceful and intimate, then we're going to see him as friend. If we're seeing him as majestic but graceful, then he can be our king. If we see him as majestic but with justice, then he's going to be the judge. When we see him as justice and intimate, then he's in the role of father. Do you see it? Now, let me ask you a question. Which quadrant do you like the best and which quadrant do you spend the most time in? I submit to you that most of us today like the quadrant of friend the best. And here's, watch this. That's why we're troubled when we go through hard times. We think his primary attribute is love and his number one thing is to be our friend. So we can't figure out why a loving friend would let us go through a hard time. But when we see him as holy and as king, we say, Lord, take me through whatever you need to to make me holy, God. When we see him as holy and judge, we say, burn out of me anything you need to burn out of me that's sin. I need your help with that. When we see him as holy and father, we say, yes, Lord, like the prodigal son, I'm going to come back to your embrace and your hug. When we see him as holy and his friend, we say, oh, wow, I can't believe you spent time with me like this. What a joy. Do you see it? But we spend all of our time and a lot of our songs and a lot of our preaching is in friend category. So this, when we begin to talk in Nahum about judge and king category, we go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to hear that fire and brimstone stuff. But if you're going to understand God, you're going to have to understand all four of those. Now, some of you may spend more time in the judge category and you judge everybody else too much. So we can all float around. But Nahum is going to operate in the judge and the king section. That's where we're going in this book of the Bible, okay? Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org.